thank you all for coming to the grand reopening of the Cupertino Sports Center. I'd like to know how many people have ever remodeled their kitchen or a bathroom. This is like a 15,000 square foot kitchen remodel, and it's done five months early and on budget. And And in a little while, you're going to uh, meet the people who actually made that happen. I'd like to start today with the pledge. If you could um, face the flag, I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. There are some people who've been involved in this project for a very long period of time. Um, the project's gone through a lot of iterations. At one time we were going to level the building and then we had some budget issues and decided the remodel was more feasible. Um, to talk a little bit about that process is the chair of our Parks and Recreation Commission, Jeannie Bradford. Thank you. Well, good morning, everyone. Uh, I'm so glad to see so many people here. Today is a great day for Cupertino. And uh, I know a lot of you that are out here today participated in this process in one way or the other. And this is a huge milestone for our city and one that I hope that uh, you all feel very proud of. Uh, before I make a few comments, I just want to introduce some uh, people that are here today. I'll start with those behind me. I'm sure you all recognize our city council. Uh, so first, uh, our mayor, Sandra James. <clears throat> Vice Mayor Patrick Kwok. <laughs> council Member Sandy, Dolly Sandoval. <laughs> Sorry, Dolly, it's early. It's all right. <laughs> council Member Richard Lowenthal. and council member Chris Wang. There's a few other people in the audience I'd like to introduce as well. Our city manager, Dave Knapp. There's Dave, thank you. Uh, commissioner, planning commissioner, Tagi Sadai. Tagi. Parks Recreation Commissioner, Frank Jalinch. Parks and Recreation Commissioner, Rod Brown. Saw somewhere. And I don't know if Roger Peng is here. I haven't seen him. Well, I'm sure he's with us in spirit. So once again, I just want to thank everyone for being here. As Therese said, this has been a long process. And, and um, it's just an amazing accomplishment we've, we've made as a city. I don't know how many of you have been inside the building yet. I took a tour yesterday. And let me tell you, when you walk through those doors, you are all in for a great treat. This is something that we will all be very proud of. And it occurred to me as I walked through the facility and I just recalled a lot of the, the conversations and discussions that we've had about this project, what really came to mind was how important the public input process is. When you look back over the, the course of, it's been about three and a half years, I think, when this process started, there were so many ways for people to uh, participate in the process, whether you were involved in the original advisory committee, uh, they got together and looked at options, everything from doing basic up upgrades to this facility, clear to uh, leveling the building and starting over again and with options in between. And that was a great effort and was able to really uh, look at what the options were and how we wanted to move forward as a community. I think one of the shared goals between the, the council and the commission was always to create a recreational facility that addressed the div diverse and growing needs of this community. And I think we can say with confidence that we did accomplish that in the opening of this sports center. And it was through the public input process that people could share their visions, share their creativities, uh, have their feelings and, and thoughts known about what should and should not be a part of this facility. And as you can go through, you can see that represented in, in the activities that we have. Um, 
I really invite you to spend time in the new facility. There's a multi-purpose room downstairs that uh, I was standing in there yesterday. It was just me and Colleen and the echo of our voices. But in that one space, thank you, in uh, that one space, there are so many different activities that we can accommodate for this community, whether it's basketball or table tennis or group aerobics. And it's such a, a great and flexible space that really gives us the opportunity to meet a lot of different needs. And of course, I'll just say a few words. I think there's going to be a lot said today about the Teen Center, but in my opinion, when you stand in that Teen Center, you need to know that today is a, a defining day for this city. I know many of you are well aware of the, uh, the teens and the caliber of teens that we have in this community. They are just extraordinary. And you don't have to look very far on any given day to see many teens in this community who are excelling either in academics or in sports or in their volunteerism. It's pervasive in this community and it is so important as the adults of this community for us to really step up and make it clear that we understand the value they bring, the accomplishment they bring, and that they have a place in this community. And I think with the Teen Center opening today, it is a defining moment for this city that we really um, have shown them that they matter and they have a place. Uh, they have a place with us here that's very, very important. So thank you very much for your support in that. So with that, I would like to introduce the chair of the Teen Commission. The T Teen Commission has been very involved in this project, and their chair is Yen Trang, and I'll invite him to come up here and share some comments as well. Good, mor good morning, my name is Yan Cheng and, and I'm the chair of this year's Teen Commission. I, on behalf of the Teen Commission, would first like to thank several people and organizations without whom this Teen Center would not be possible. First and foremost, we would like to thank the current City Council and the City Councils of past for having the drive, dedication, and vision to include the Teen Center within the renovated Sports Center. The development of the Teen Center has started many years ago when City Council recognized that it was important for teenagers to be in a fun and safe atmosphere, both for the teenagers' sake and the parents' peace of mind. And with the Teen Center, I think they more, more than accomplished that. We are extremely thankful for them fighting the hard fight against opposition to the Teen Center for what they believed was best for the teens of Cupertino. The Teen Center will offer a safe and a relaxing place where students can go after school for homework, study groups, or simply to hang out with friends. I feel that one of the greatest assets of the, of the Teen Center that, is that it promotes such diversity with students with the programs that we offer. For the students that just want to come to hang out, we offer a pool table, foosball table, video games, and, and other activities. And for students that just want to go there for a quiet place to do homework, we offer high-end computers where they can do their projects in a and a quiet environment where they can meet for research projects. Secondly, I would like to thank the entire Parks and Recre Recreation Commi Commission, especially Jeannie, Kim, and Christine, for all the hard work they put into making the Teen Center what it is. Although there were some disagreements along the process, as there are in any process, I felt it was very effective how they were able to balance what needs to be done from an institutional and business standpoint regarding policies and rules with what we as a teen commission felt was best after talking to teens of Cupertino. Finally, I would also like to give thanks to the teen commissions who have come before this year's commission, most of whom are in college and some of whom are in attendance today. The process started with the teen commission from two years ago and we as a teen commission this year are merely trying to carry on the tradition of hard work and dedication that they laid down as foundation. So with that, I would like to introduce the teen commission of this year. Um, first, the vice chair of the teen commission, Princess Castaneda, um, and the other and the other teen commission members are Alexander Cohen. Piyush Goyle, Cosmo Jiang, 
Irem Myrtle. Kevin Schroeder. Catherine Wang. Paige Dixon. Chris Haley. Alexander Lee. Rotem Raviv. And Yusuf Sahoni. <laughs> Finally, I would like to thank all of who showed up for the grand opening of the Sports Center and Teen, and teen, and teen Center, especially for those high school students who have the dreaded finals this coming week. <laughs> <laughs> On behalf of the Teen Commission, we are really looking forward to, to the Teen Center with everything that it has to offer with open arms and great expectations. Thank you. Thank you, Yenin. Isn't that a great teen commission? Yeah. Next, I'd like to introduce Mayor Sandra James. Thank you, Jeannie. There are a couple other people I'd like to start out acknowledging. Wally Dean, who was on the uh, city council when we started all this. Wally? And another important member of our staff, way in the back there, because he's shy and he always likes to hide, Captain John Harakawa. Come on, John. Our Sheriff's Department, very important part of, uh, of our city staff. I am incredibly excited, as is the rest of the council today, to open your new sports center. And it is definitely an example of a building that has been built with consensus and with cooperation and with everybody giving something. And I think that's a really important lesson today because the Planning Commission, the Parks and Rec Commission, and the City Council heard from every possible sports group trying to protect their territory, which is typical, uh, and not wanting anyone else to infringe upon their territory, which is also very typical. And it is our job to take all of that information in and try to present for you a product which facilitates and represents the needs of the, gra the vast majority of the city. And in this instance, Thanks, thank you to all of you working together with us. We had consensus amongst all the groups. And in order to get consensus amongst all the groups, nobody got everything. Just like in your family, you know, nobody got everything. And we didn't get everything as a council, because you know what our first choice was? It was to tear down the whole building and start anew from scratch. And we didn't have the revenue to do that, much as I don't have the revenue to do a new family room and kitchen in my home right now. And so we had to do something different. And we had a lot of hard choices to do that. And we came up with a building. When I saw it last Monday, I was prepared to say, gosh, I know this is going to be wonderful, but gee, I really wish. And you know what? I don't feel that way at all, and neither will you, because it turned out to be the better solution. And so whoever's running the show around here knew better than we did to start with. And we actually came up with a building that is so functional and works so well. I don't think we could have developed one from scratch that works any better. And we did facilitate everyone's needs. And I believe when you go through here, you're going to see that. I am incredibly excited about the quality of the exercise program. And I am going to join. So I'm one of the first members. And I'll be doing all my workouts here. And when you see the workout area, you're be very excited. Um, it's just really delightful. We enhanced a lot of the tennis because we have wonderful areas to sit outside and watch play to play tennis now and, an air, and better locker rooms and uh, better shower facilities for the tennis players, a place for parents to sit out on the veranda and watch their young children have lessons. So we enhanced the tennis program that was already here. We kept two of the racquetball courts, which was very important to many of our racquetball players, but we took away some of the racquetball courts and we made a half basketball court and an area to break out for ping pong and table tennis and uh, badminton. And everyone came to consensus about that. And then our wonderful teen center, and I have to say a few words about that because I 
along with Frank Jalinch, where'd you go, Frank? We were on the Parks and Rec Commission in 1995 when we started this whole idea way back when. It's been a dream for the whole city. The wonderful part about the Teen Center was it, it really wasn't wanted here by the adults who used the center, the great majority of them, when we first started talking about it. They didn't want those terrible kids here. Those terrible kids who convinced them after they got to meet with them and dialogue with them and talk to them that they had a lot to add to the sports center. Some wonderful things to add to the sports center. And the interaction of our adult community and our young adult and teen community is going to be something that we will all be very, very, very blessed and pleased with. We have a teen center that was designed by teens that was visioned by teens, that is implemented by teens, and that is going to be managed by teens with supervision from some adults. And that is why it's going to work. And that is the beauty of it. I am incredibly proud. Drew Gulkirk. Drew, where are you? Drew is on the original teen commission back there that started all this, too. He now, he, we've now hired him. He's over at Dan's and he supervises the skate park. He was originally on the skate park committee. The whole idea of getting teens and young adults involved was to get them into city government, to have them be a part of what their government is all about, for them to understand that we value their ideas and their inputs, that they are important to us and that we learn from each other. So please go visit the teen center, even if you're not a teen. And what we found out in just showing it around is adults want to be there. So we're going to lease the space out for private parties on Sundays to start and we already have some people who have leased it out it's a pretty cool place so go take a look at it um, I am delighted I want to acknowledge the support of all the council because this has taken a lot of hard work it's something we're very very proud of particularly in this day of economic downturn to be able to open a new facility but I do want to ask our city manager who is not on the agenda to come up and say a few words because we couldn't do it without him and while he's here I want to acknowledge another important staff staff member, Ralph Qualls, who has been introduced, but Ralph Qualls is our public works director. And we brought the senior center in on time, on budget. You know, it's unheard of in public work. Right? Everybody thinks we're so inefficient. This one came in five months ahead of schedule. We had to scrounge around for revenue to hire the staff because we weren't expecting to staff it for another half year. So on budget, five months ahead of time, very, very Good kudos to you, Ralph, and to your staff. And I want to give the city manager a chance to say a few words, because we couldn't do any of it without his leadership. Thank you very much. I appreciate that. Just a couple of quick thoughts. This facility is here today in the state that it's in because the community supports it, because this council and the councils before this council made it a priority. And then there's the implementation, and that's where the rubber hits the road. And there are two people, and uh, the mayor has already mentioned Ralph Qualls, but Ralph Qualls is a genius at building things. And uh, he's built a billion dollars worth of public facilities in his lifespan. He's a consummate pro at doing this. And the second person who was his partner in getting this done is Terry Green, our senior architect. And those are the two guys that really, really put the time in. So thank you very much. I know you're eager to see the facility. Thank you. And finally, I would just like to acknowledge Therese Smith and her staff. Uh, Therese is the Director of Parks and Recreation. She was here earlier. And they have worked with the Commission and with the Council through this whole process and, and really helped manage the public input process. And, and uh, you've done a fabulous job. And thank you for your contr contribution to this. And I will turn it back over to you. Thank you, Jeannie. Um, when you have a really minuscule budget, you need the billion dollar man, Ralph Qualls, to get you through um, the decision making process about what you can and can't afford. But you also need a very good architect. And um, I'm going to introduce the woman who actually did the plans and specs for this construction project um, so that she can make a few comments. Um, one of the things that helps bring a project in on time is a very good set of bid documents on time and on budget that doesn't lead a, uh, leave a lot of ambiguity for the contractor when he actually begins to implement the work. Um, so Erica. When you go in and you see the colors and the carpet and how the spaces have evolved, this is the person responsible, Erica Willowoodnick from Field Paley Architects. Good morning, everyone. Well, I'm really excited to be here and that I could be part of this process. Um, I can't take all the credit for it. I had a great team backing me up. Um, Karen 
Pahead is here. She's from my office, and my boss, Mark Schatz, wasn't able to be here this morning. He's flying back from an interview in Alaska, and he'll be here later this afternoon. Um, in my office, we had a great team, and a great team of consultants, engineers, um, and other consultants, spec writers, that type of thing, that helped pull this project together. And as far as the implementation process, that was a team all in itself, um, a construction management team, Nova Partners. We had a great crew there, David Marks, Chris Thompson, and Scott Fees all helped to manage the relationships between everyone, uh, between Terry Green and the city staff, Don McCarthy and Parks, Parks and Rec and Therese and everyone, all of their staff, and also the contractor who definitely deserves some credit here. They're probably one of the best contractors I've worked with, um, and they're the reason why we're here five months early, because they had the ability to um, pull together their teams of subcontractors and do a very high quality job and still manage to meet the budget. Um, and I'd like to thank Gary Meadows from XL Construction, Casper Wagner, and Steve Winslow. Um, I hope I'm not leaving anyone out, but it's really been a great process here. Thank you for having me. And I know you're all dying to get in there, but there are two more people that have to speak because they're responsible for programming. Okay, now, so now we're getting to the fun stuff. Christine Hanel, Recreation Supervisor for the Teen Division and Don McCarthy in Sports and Fitness. Uh, Christine? Thank you. I will keep this brief because I know everybody's anxious to get into the building. It feels very appropriate, however, to have these five folks behind me along with Therese Smith. I want to thank the City Council. Every time staff goes to you, you say yes. You always offer approval to the teen and youth programs, and I just want you to know that as staff, we appreciate it, and I know that the community appreciates it. Back in 1995, Sandy had alluded to the fact that the process had begun to find a teen center and to enhance our teen programs. And at that time, a survey was conducted asking teens what they wanted to see in the community. One of the things, and I won't go into a lot of detail, was they wanted a teen center. They just wanted a place to hang out, hang out with people like themselves, a place with supervision, but cool supervision. And I'm <coughs> proud to say that today I think we finally met that goal, and we couldn't have done it without all the resources that we have available to us. I want to give special thanks to my staff. Kim Fry is our teen coordinator. Kim. Kim has been working um, <laughs> nonstop, frantically, for about the last month, trying to get everything ready in the teen center. So I hope that you all will come down and take a look. Whether or not you're a teen, I think you will appreciate what you see. Um, I also want to thank my family that is here. Um, for those of you that are familiar with the Parks and Rec profession. We do not just work eight to five hours. We work long days at times, and especially with a project like this. So I appreciate their support. It allows mom to be here and to get the job done. And lastly, to the teens of the community, I want you to know we value you. We appreciate you. We heard you. We listened to you. And today, I hope with the Teen Center, you will understand and you will appreciate the community. Not just the city here values and appreciates you, but the entire community. I was amazed. Yesterday morning, we began uh, going through our long to-do list for today. And we realized we needed to still contact vendors in the community to ask for donations. Every phone call that we made was met with a positive, yes, we'll, we're happy to donate. We're, we apologize we hadn't responded sooner. We've been busy with the holidays and whatnot. But it was absolutely amazing that so many people in this community value you. And so please keep that in mind. Um, and I'm going to go ahead now and, and end what I have to say, since I know you're all anxious to get into the building. But I hope that you will come down, check out the Teen Center, 
have your kids check it out, and please do not hesitate to contact myself or Kim Fry if you have any concerns or additional ways that we can meet the needs of the teens. Thank you. And lastly, but surely not least, I have to tell you, I celebrated my 14th year of employment this past week with the city, and my first supervisor was Don McCarthy. And for those of you that have lived in Cupertino for a while, you recall that the Parks and Recreation Office used to be at McClellan Ranch Park. It was a very small little house. <laughs> and I will never forget the day when I heard, Woo! Yes! Way to go! And I'm like, what the heck is going on? Don called me in and, and informed me that he had just gotten off the phone with the, the director at the time and was told that we had just purchased the sports center. He was very excited and so was the entire department. It's been a long road and this man has been through a lot of uphill battles and downhills and um, anyways, Don, congratulations, you finally made it to this day. Thank you, Thank you Christine. As well, I will try to be brief, but that might be difficult. I can promise you one thing, though. I am the last speaker, except for the ribbon cutting there. Um, one of the things in parks and recreation, this profession, what we teach our part-time staff in training is we refer to what's called as the big E. And the big E stands for a lot of different things. This is enthusiasm, energy, excitement. And not only do we want to convey that to our part-time staff and our training. We want to do that when we renovate buildings or build new things. And I think this city has a, a very good history with some of the buildings that we've renovated and uh, newly constructed. And you will see in a few short minutes exactly what I'm talking about. I refer to it as the wow feature. When you walk through those double doors right there, especially those of you that saw the old facility I bet you I'm going to hear at least a few wows. And that's something that obviously we wanted to create. The other thing we wanted to create was a nice open environment before the building that was built in the uh, mid-70s was very closed in. There was a big dining room, a kitchen, a bar. Those things were just not things that we needed in today's uh, sports center. So with the help of a lot of committee work um, that people have talked about already, uh, we came up with a tremendous design. I think you guys will like that. I do have some acknowledgments. First of all, I'd like to acknowledge all of the recreation staff, uh, including the part-time staff, which a lot of them are up there and out there. Let's give them a hand. As they are aware, I get in what's called my driver mode, and this week I was definitely in that mode. And I used to kid them that I was going to ask for forgiveness on January 11th. They did a tremendous job, a, a miraculous job. I'm just so proud of each and every one of you. Great job. Also, in terms of public works, I'd like to recognize some specific in individuals that helped out the entire process. Roger Winslow, Rudy Lomas, Bill Bodine, Bill Bridge, Chris Orr, Jim Davis, Bob Rizzo, Cindy Martinez. In addition to that, full-time recreation staff, Karen Levy, Marie Preston, Therese Smith, Tom Walters, and really the person that sacrificed a lot moving over to this facility about four months ago, and that's Colleen Manning. She's the new sports center coordinator, the on-site day-to-day manager. She has done a great job learning this new operation um, and I'm just very happy and very happy to have her over here. In addition to that, with XL Construction, tremendous construction company to work with. I know we, some people have talked about them before. I do want to recognize one individual that I got to know uh, pretty closely during the project, especially in the last month. That's Mr. Gary Meadows, who's the project superintendent. He's right over there. Gary Meadows has just one motto, and that is can do. He can do anything, and I really appreciate that. 
Um, it was wonderful to work with him. In addition to that, I'd like to recognize Grant Gower. Where's Grant? I see him out there. There he is. Grant is the president of the Cupertino Tennis Club, and he was instrumental in working with the city uh, on the design as well as uh, the co-sponsored club, the different events and things that the tennis club has are out on the tennis courts. Also, Dana Gill. Dana Gill is with Lifetime Tennis. That is the, he's out over there. Dana Gill has been on contract with the city of Cupertino for the better part of a decade. He is the principal of Lifetime Tennis responsible for creating the tennis instruction program with the city's assistance. Uh, again, we uh, send through about 6,000 individuals through tennis instruction per year and that's in private and group lessons. It's a tremendous asset. That, that program parallels any in the state of California in terms of municipal tennis instruction. Also, I'd like to thank uh, Fusako Haroibe, who is a master Ikebanist. She's not here today. Her husband, John, is. He's right in front. Fusako has created some absolutely stunning uh, focal points in this building and when you walk through you will see those they are nothing short of, of tremendous also Judy Carlton and Carla Frazier part-time recreation staff that spent numerous hours uh, uh, making murals painting murals on the wall in the child watch area when you go in there again I think I'm gonna hear a few wows I could probably go on for another half hour but I need to end this right here I started in this with this, I was involved in the original purchase of this building back in 1990. We opened up this building April 1st, 1990, the same day that we opened up the Quinlan Center. Uh, we closed escrow on that, uh, on that day. And we've, like Christine said, there's been a lot of peaks and valleys and this is definitely a high moment. And I appreciate you all coming here and we're very proud to open up this facility. Thank you very much. Thank you, Don. Okay, it's time. Um, if th the mayor and the chair of the Parks and Rec Commission and the Teen Commission could get the ceremonial scissors, it's time to open the doors. Yeah, when they get ready. Okay, are you ready? Ten, nine, eight, seven, six. Five, four, three, two, one. The Sports Center is open.